In the North End neighborhood, Symmetria rummaged through her bedroom closet in the Parker family home. She balanced a phone receiver under one ear. Rufus was on the line. You okay this morning? He asked. I wasn't the one who got shot, Symmetria said. This is nothing to make light of, Rufus said. I told you it's rough there at the Swan sometimes. Symmetria held up a couple of dresses to herself in the mirror. Jimmy's your godfather, she said. He's not going to let anything happen to me when I sing there. About that, Rufus butted in. It won't look good with the best singer of Hastings Street Church Choir performing at the Swan. The pastor's daughter? As if on cue, Reverend Parker broke through the phone line from downstairs. Mitri, time for breakfast. He hung up. Look, Rufus, I gotta go, Symmetria said. Wait, Symmetria! In Hazel Park, horses flew around a large track. In the stands, Louis weaved in and out to pick up cash from bidders. He did a quick count of the money, frowned, then counted it again. What's going on here, he muttered. Louis looked up to see Smitty the right hand of the leader of the Hamtramck boys, direct two of his henchmen to drag a better away. Louis followed them. Behind the stands, Smitty's henchmen roughed up the better. Again, why is your money so short? Smitty demanded. You tell me, the better said. I was told old bloke was placing second, not third. Hey, Louis shouted. Smitty and his men pivoted to face off of Louis. The better ran away. Just who I wanted to see, Smitty said. Louis, why are you messing with our money? That's my question to you, Smits, Louis said. I don't know what game you're playing. Louis stepped towards Smitty, but his arms started to shake. Smitty held his men back and snickered. <laughs> Louis ain't himself today, boys, he said. I'm going to let him off with a warning. Later, on Detroit's riverfront, large cranes lifted blocks of limestone from freighters. In a corner of the dock, Louis exchanged money in a paper bag with Henry, his dealer. Nice to see you again, Louis, Henry said. Louis snatched the bag of drugs and stormed off. Back on Hastings Street, Jimmy walked with a dry cleaner's bag draped over his arm. Along the way, he noticed several new empty storefronts. At the far end of the block, he saw a crew of white men rope off a building as another crew boarded up windows. On East Grand Boulevard, Louis pulled up in front of a rundown residence. Inside, one nurse helped Roscoe into his jacket. Dr. Jones, a black physician, nodded to Louie as he filed a chart. I gave him some pills for the pain, but he won't likely need them. Dr. Jones watched Louie shake. Is there something I could help you with as well, Louie? He asked. Louie signaled for Roscoe to exit. On his way out, Louie collared Dr. Jones. Mind your own damn business. In the Gotham, elevator doors opened onto the ninth floor. Down a long hallway, Roscoe followed Louis past open office doorways filled with black bookkeepers with adding machines. Inside the Great Hall, Louis and Roscoe passed through a large room of black clerks with switchboards and typewriters. Sadie, a statuesque black woman who was Max's assistant, blocked Louis and Roscoe's path. Roscoe, glad to hear you're okay, Sadie said rather sweetly. Mac is waiting for you. Afternoon, Sadie, Louis said. Sadie gave Louis a cold look. Hello, Louis. Mac was at his desk when Louis and Roscoe were shown in. Mac looked Roscoe up and down. You all right, man? Yes, Mr. Bird, Roscoe said. Okay, then I have a pickup for you at the El Sino. 
Roscoe nodded and left. Max watched Louis sit down, then suddenly jump back up. Do I need to check your arms, Louis? Mac asked. No, Mac. I'm clean, Louis said. Louis heard a dull roar in his head. He bit his bottom lip as he tried to appear alert. Sixty days in the damn sanatorium was enough. All right then, Mac said. Then look alive. I have concerns about Roscoe. You might be taking his place. That night at the Swan, Jimmy arranged chairs. Officer Connors, a white beat cop with southern roots, entered. Jimmy glared at Connors, then resumed setting up for the night. Not open yet, Jimmy said. Connors took a seat at the bar. Jimmy swore under his breath and walked behind the bar to pour Connors a drink. Y'all must be proud of Rufus graduating from the academy and all, Connor said. I forget, how y'all know each other? Jimmy refilled Connor's glass without a word. I'm going to figure all that out, Connors continued. And I'll overlook your little friendship with that Inspector McCampbell, too. And that goddamn Louie. For now. Connors emptied his glass. I like you, Jimmy, Connor said. I watched you play down south. We share those southern roots. We know how to handle things decent-like. Not like them up here. Who are you talking about, officer? Jimmy asked. Trying to warn you. Connor slurred. About what's coming. Something's coming for me? Jimmy asked. For all of Hastings. Connor replied. Then I'll be ready for it, Jimmy said. Connor rose and stumbled for the exit. If anybody can, it's you, Jimmy. <laughs>